Hello, everyone. Welcome to another topic in our podcast series. My name is Robin Dolezal, and with me, as always, is David Renzi and Alex Pars. Together, we are with Ironwood Financial. So many people we run across are looking for a financial advisor and want to know what fee-based means. So today, we're going to define fee-based and why that might be better than the alternatives. So Alex, what does fee-based mean to you? So fee-based is just a different way of paying people. You know, traditionally, when you saw a financial advisor, it was all based on commission. And I would say the vast majority of financial advisors still are commission-based or primarily commission-based. So it's a very different way of looking at financial advice. The number one thing to me that makes it important to have a fee-based advisor is that you have fewer conflicts of interest. So, you know, if you go to, you know, the auto dealer and go to buy a car, you have a direct conflict of interest on how much you're paying them and which car they're going to recommend. You know, pickup trucks have the highest profit built into them, so chances are, you know, that's why we see a lot of pickup trucks on the road these days, right? So, same thing's true in financial products. Some financial products carry, what, an 8 to 10% commission? You know, think about that. You know, you put $100,000 into that and someone makes $10,000 like that, okay? That gives a pretty strong incentive to that person to sell that product to you. Fee-based on the other side is completely different. What it means is they have no incentive to sell you a particular product. For example, in our practice, when we recommend something, if we recommend X, we recommend Y, we recommend Z, there's no difference in our compensation. If we make 100 trades, we make two trades, no difference in our compensation. What we're doing is we're trying to improve performance. So if we do successfully improve performance, we get paid more. Well, that means the client also has more money. Again, contrast with commission-based, it's set it and forget it, or sell it and forget it in that case. So once you sell a commission product, there may be some small trailing commissions, but most of the time, it's just an upfront, one and done, I'll call you back in five years and try and sell you something different. Yeah, you know, it really does lead into service too, right? I mean, when you've got someone who, who makes something upfront, like a commission upfront, as you just alluded to, you know, once they're paid, their incentive to see that see that client or service that client really diminishes. Whereas if someone's fee-based, obviously they want to continue to, to service that client, see that client's needs through. And, and that's definitely something we've seen. I mean, we've seen that in the real world all the time. You know, people come in, they're like, yeah, I've got a financial advisor. You know, we've had them for five years and, you know, they talked to me a lot at first and haven't heard from them in three years. And it's just, you know, it's based on human nature. You know, they're not getting paid to talk to you. Why would they keep talking to you? And I think something that's important to consider is that when you do deal with someone who's more of a commission advisor, they don't have an incentive to change your portfolio with the times. So being fee-based allows your advisor to basically be nimble and meet with you constantly and update based on changes in your situation. I mean, we saw the case where a client came in once and he, she was sold a bunch of commission products and we said, hey, what happened? And she said, oh, my advisor retired. <laughs> So he filled her, <laughs> filled her accounts with commission stuff that she couldn't get out of for 10 years and she never heard from him again. And unfortunately, that's, that's not an uncommon event in this industry. So it's very important that you're clear on how your advisor gets paid and if they're acting in your best interest. That's, that's another great point actually, Dave, that you made there, which is with commission products, you often have a significant period of time you're locked up in that product. Okay. And that's, you know, generally a, a good question you ask is why am I locked into this product? Okay, and there's lots of reasons these people come up with, but most of the time it's because there's a commission associated with it. Um, you can get commission-free annuities that have no lockup period. You can also get 20 year long annuities that have huge, huge commissions and huge surrender periods. So, you know, if think about it from your perspective, this investment is so good that they're not gonna let me get rid of it, even if I wanted to, okay? If it was so good, you wouldn't wanna get rid of it. Therefore, they wouldn't have to trap you into it. So <laughs> yeah. that's, a, right? I mean, that's, that's one way of thinking about it is if you see a product that's got a surrender charge on it, ask yourself, is it that, it's that good they're not gonna yeah. let me leave? You know, <laughs> you alluded to this before too, but really transparency is really important with people, especially these days. And with fee-based, you really do get transparency, right? It comes out every single quarter, you see your fees. With commission products, you know, you might see something, but a lot of those, those fees and commissions or even expenses 
are hidden, not even inside of a statement, but inside of a prospectus that no one reads. Oh, and also if you do a Google search on them, uh, you'll find that somehow they're suppressing the commission rates. <laughs> it's very, very hard to find out what the commission is on a particular product. So, and again, why would you do that? And I guess that's a, that's a good tool for comparison shopping if you are interviewing multiple advisors. An important question to ask is, what am I going to be all in in my entire portfolio or what you can expect to pay? Because it's not what you make, it's what you keep. And so it's very important right. to realize, hey, is there, are there hidden expenses that are, that are really eating in even though the advisor is discounting their fee? You could be better off with going with the more, a higher headline fee with a lower cost investment uh, expense ratio or hidden expense. Definitely, definitely. And, and another thing also is, you know, have you ever hired someone that you decided you didn't like after six months or a year? Okay? With long surrender charge products, with commission products, you know, you're stuck. Okay? Generally, fee-based advisors, as far as I'm aware, don't have a you must stay with us for X length of time. And again, think about that from a service perspective. Okay? If I've got a product that you're stuck for 10 years, how much service do I need to give you? Not very much. If I have a product that's, I have to keep you happy or I don't get paid again next quarter, I'm gonna do my darndest to keep you happy. Okay? So you get phone calls, you get more service, you get people being attentive to your needs and interested in your changing needs. Because again, I can switch from here to there, total different product, total different strategy, if that's what's appropriate for today and what's appropriate for your situation. And I think that something that's important too is that when you're working with the fee-based advisors, Alex kind of alluded to, you're basically building a long-term relationship with someone where they have to do what's in your best interest or at least keep you happy because every new client is just as valuable as every old client. And so it's not like, hey, I sold you something, now I don't have to keep you happy. It's no, you're paying me the same as everyone else. Therefore, I'd like to keep this relationship going. And, and that actually brings up another thing, which is from a legal perspective, fee-based advisors are held to a different standard than commission advisors. So commission advisors generally are held to what's called suitability, which means that you know, if I can sell you a, a pen or a gold-plated pen, as long as a pen is suitable for you, I can sell you whichever one I want. Well, guess which one's gonna make me more money? Gold-plated pen, hard to say. Well, th that's true in uh, commission products. They can sell you a much higher hidden fee, higher expense, it doesn't matter. As long as a pen is right for you, it could be the most expensive pen in the world, okay? In the fee-based world, typically you're held to what's called a fiduciary standard, which is you have to do what you think is in the client's best interest. Doesn't mean you're right, but at least you have to try. And that's very different. So again, if I'm looking at a gold-plated pen and a regular pen, and all we need to do is write a couple notes, well, we're gonna recommend the cheap one, okay? Because it's gonna do the job just as well, and you're gonna have more money left in your pocket. You alluded to this in the very, very beginning too, but we talked about conflicts of interest. Many times when you get someone who's fee-based, even if there is a, a conflict of interest, they're very transparent about it and will tell you up front if there is any sort of conflicts of interest. Usually with fee-based, you've actually eliminated most of those conflicts of interest, but you know, if there is one, you're, that advisor is gonna tell you if there's one or not. Yeah, so for example, if we look at taking over a retirement account, one of the things we have to tell people in writing is you know, this is going to cost you more maybe depending on the account that it's coming from, than you were pre previously paying. For that, these are the services you're gonna get, okay? And you have to say, I understand that and that makes sense before I go ahead and do it, okay? There's no you know, hiding what we're trying to do. This is all make sure you're happy, make sure you stay happy. That's the benefit of fee-based is it's not a quick sell and run. It's you gotta stay happy or it was never worth forming the relationship in the first place. You know, for us, as fee-based advisors, if a client doesn't stay with us for a couple few years, it's not worth our time. It's just financially not worth the, you know, the time you spend setting it up, doing all the research, doing all the work, the implementation, et cetera. Well, as you folks can tell, we might be biased, but <laughs> you can tell that we believe if you're looking for a financial advisor and you're going to pay someone to help you with that for their time and expertise, the fee-based is probably the way to go. There's obvious alternatives out there, um, but fee-based, in our opinion, is really the best way to look. And again, you know, maybe we're biased, but that's where we came from. You know, we, I started as a commission-based investment advisor and with the quotas, with the, you must sell more of this product, you know, all that stuff that happens in the corporate world, I didn't feel like I was serving my clients to my best abilities. Being fee-based, there's no quotas. There's no, hey, sell so much of this product and we'll send you to Jamaica, okay? It's, it's just do what you think is right. And if your clients agree, 
they'll stick with you and your business will build. All right, so David, I wanted to ask you a question. What What is the average fee when you're working with someone who's fee-based? Uh, there's really a range. So typically it seems as though the most common fee is about 1%. However, once you hit a certain threshold, most firms will start discounting. Now, some of the, I've just known to some of the bigger wirehouses with the names you see, with the TV commercials, all that, they might charge one and a half, one and a quarter percent uh, to start. Um, Typically, your more local firms are going to charge more like 1%. And as you mentioned, go down from there, depending on the size of the account. So Alex, when you say 1%, what does that mean? So if you you know invest 100 bucks, they charge a dollar per year, okay? If your 100 bucks turns into 200 bucks, well, then the advisor gets paid $2. And you're presumably happy. On conversely, if your 100 bucks turns into 50 bucks, they get paid 50 cents. You're unhappy, they're unhappy. So again, it's another way of putting yourself on the same side of the table. You know. Every, you know, we want our clients' accounts to grow, but at the same time, we're not like a hedge fund where we swing for the fences. We have to be prudent in our investment allocation because we don't want to see it shrink. We want to make sure that it grows reasonably and we don't put all your ducks in one basket. That's not <laughs> ducks. You don't put ducks in a basket, do you? So we want it to grow prudently and we don't want to put all our eggs in one basket. So just so we're making comparables, obviously the average, we'll call it as 1% per year. What is a typical mutual fund that's got a loaded commission up front cost? I think it's, a, well, it depends on the, sh the share class, right? Because A shares are 5% B share. Yeah, it's just a typical A share. Front, front, he said front loaded. Okay, in general, you're paying about 5% on the front end, as well as a higher internal expense called an expense ratio. So one of the benefits of going with a fee-based advisor is that in most cases, they try their best to cut off, or cut out rather, uh, high expense ratios. So an expense ratio is an internal expense that most funds have, or that all funds have rather, and it basically is what the company takes before you get yours. And so if you look, these things can really compound on each other. So if you have a commission product that pays a high commission upfront, and then you have a high internal expense, you really got to fill a lot of buckets before it gets to you. And one of the things also is for that high internal expense, oftentimes the manager is placing a lot of trades, which may not be tax efficient either. And so there's a, a conundrum of things that can happen when you go with commission products for them to justify the fee. Right. One thing that, again, on, on commission products, if you're looking at something particularly with an upfront expense, you know, like your traditional A share mutual fund, they might charge you 5% upfront. Well, if you invest a hundred bucks, only $95 goes to work. Okay. And then if they have a 2% or 1.75, you know, internal expense ratio, you have to make 7% before you break even, right? Or something close to that number. So most of the time fee-based advisors, they go and they try to reduce you know, the ex the internal fees. So most of our portfolios, we look at around a quarter percent, which I think the average mutual so fund is somewhere around 1% hidden fees. So it's it works out to be significantly less expensive right. and tax efficient. And something to consider too is that oftentimes when you're buying commission products, they're gonna start selling you insurance products. And those have even higher fees and higher internal expenses. So you can yeah. really end up paying a lot before before the money actually reaches you. It's it's not uncommon for us to find an annuity product with a three and a half percent hidden fee. Um, and that's that's pretty big. Again, if you made ten percent, you'd walk away with six and a half, you know, let's put that on a hundred thousand dollars or you know, or a million dollars, right? So you're you're talking about twenty thousand dollars less per year that you're making you know, over 10 years, that could be 200 grand. That's a significant impact on a portfolio. So expenses are important. Yeah, expenses are very important. They're definitely a drag on the portfolio. Um, so we talked about the service being aligned with fee-based, right? You get more service typically. The lower expenses typically, especially on the upfront end of those things. What else did we want to talk about as far as fee-based? Did you say, is it worth it? Uh, is it worth it? Yeah. So you so you're paying an advisor an extra one percent of your no, okay. hard earned money. Is that worth it? So, as we've discussed, let's just say our average fee for a fee based planner is one percent per year. You're going to be paying. That's an extra expense that you will be paying if you decide to hire an advisor. Is that worth it? That's something that you're going to have to decide, right? Some people have the time to do it themselves, uh, but they don't have the passion. Some people have the passion, but they don't have the time, right? Unless you've got both you might need some help and then you'll, it's up to you to decide if you think that 1% per year is really gonna be worth it. And that, that's something we also see all the time, which is people come in for a second opinion. I mean, David, out of your last 10 you know, first appointments, how many of you told, hey, you don't need us, you can do this on your own? I would say probably 20%. Hey, you're, you're yeah. doing well, you don't need a financial advisor yet, you're pretty efficient, let's have a, an hourly chat, or sorry, a yearly chat just to make sure things are going as planned. 
And then if something comes up that complicates your situation, hey, let's reevaluate and, and go from there. Uh, something else yeah. that's important to consider is that oftentimes do-it-yourselfers can only do it for so long. And so in most cases, there's a single spouse that is the money manager, and that person is highly competent in terms of the financial side of things. And as you get older, you may be worried about a diminished capacity in terms of your mental status. And you're worried, hey, I want to find somebody that I can trust with my spouse to make sure that things are going to go as I wished and she can continue her current lifestyle. And I would say that probably accounts for 30 to 40% of our current clients. Hey, they were doing it themselves. They were doing a fine job and they just are looking for someone to trust their spouse with. And that's something that unfortunately is not just a nebulous problem. I mean, we have seen that go horribly wrong with clients who or people who have you know, had dementia or other cognitive impairments where suddenly, you know, they're giving money away. We've seen people give their entire net worth to a religious organization and then their spouse was left destitute trying to get it back. It's not something that's that, that never happens. That is something that actually is a real concern. And something to note too is that as we age, we kind of revert to, you make the full cycle of babies are more emotional, right? And then as you age and your mental capacity starts to get diminished, you become more emotional. So finance is not just a math game. It definitely emotions come to play. And once you retire, it may be the case where you say, hey, I'd like to have somebody sitting by so that I can call them and talk me off the ledge or make sure that we're sticking to the plan so that you don't do anything rash and, and potentially ruin your portfolio or cripple something going forward. Well, this, the reality as well is, you know, this is what we do all day, every day. You know, if you're just playing with it every so often and you're not keeping up with the you know, tax laws or, or whatever it is, you're not gonna be as efficient as maybe an advisor is. Uh, well, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, if you have any questions, you can find us at www.ironwoodfinancial.com. I thank Alex Pars and David Renzi for joining me today. If you've got any questions uh, that we have not addressed and you'd like to, to, for us to talk about some of those, please don't uh, feel, feel free to reach out. Uh, you can also reach us at 520-318-4600. Thanks for watching. Thanks.